the more knowledge God has, the more power he has. And because God knows all things, God has all power. Ninth of January 2022 here we are welcome once again to this morning's online broadcast I welcome you into 2022 with the love and favor of God thank you for joining me thank you to all who support us who patronize our ministry and in so doing you make certain that these words from the Lord reach as many people as possible and also it helps sustain the ministry. Thank you and may God richly bless you. It is all of the time whenever I notice or recognize your contribution to the ministry, to the work of the Lord, I praise God for him, for his work in your life. I thank God for your part that you play in his kingdom. Your family, you are covered in our prayers. May God bless you beyond measure during this coming year. I have given you a promise or an assurance that during the course of at least the first few months of this year I want to make an effort not just to build your success on the earth but also to build your spirit your mind and I'm going to start off this year by attempting to strengthen your spirit beyond what it used to be. Now, this will make you very powerful. Do you know we know there's many scriptures but there's no need to go into it because you already know this. God is all powerful. That means that there is no power that God does not have. If you're looking for somebody who has all power, that will be God himself. Now I want you to understand where power comes from. To understand that, you have to look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, Reading verse 5, a wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. Wow. Now, I, I hope you're getting that revelation as I'm speaking to you. The more knowledge God has, the more power he has that is the principle of gaining spiritual strength and because God knows all things that equates to God has all power so without knowledge you can't have power and the more knowledge you have the more power you have. I hope you're getting this and register it. So your thirst for knowledge will equal to the strength that you have. 
So God knows all things. Therefore, he has all power. Now I'm going to I'm going to describe in detail what this entails. Knowledge comes from the word know. K N O W. And in biblical terms, the word know has a more intimate meaning. Genesis 4.1, now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain. Now, without being or sounding too crude, that actually means that Adam inserted himself into Eve and that brought forth their son Cain. Now the Hebrew word for no is yada. New or no is yada. If you look at the meaning of that word in the Hebrew dictionary, you'll find that that's what it means, yada. So when I say I know something, it means that I have inserted the knowledge of something into me. I have inserted the information into myself. That's what yada means. That's what no means. So when I say God knows all things, that means God inserted in himself the knowledge about all things, the information concerning everything. Now we know this because the Bible mentions it over and over again. He knows the number of hair on your head. He knows the name of the stars and the number. He knows everything. And so that makes him so powerful. That's because he took information about everything and he inserted it into, he yadded everything. Gives him extreme power. So when you learn something, when you listen to something, and you insert it into yourself, you yada it into your mind, that is called knowledge. So you are aware and have information about a certain thing. Like when you study, you study for your exams. During the course of your study, you absorb information and you yada it. That means you have the knowledge of a certain thing. And if you don't have information inserted into yourself about a certain thing, you are ignorant of certain things. Hosea describes this properly. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. This is a harsh sentence on anyone who doesn't want information. God is saying you will be rejected to represent him on this planet. He was talking specifically to the Jews in the Old Testament, but it applies to now as well because it's the same principle of power it means that they are weaklings in the kingdom because they're not hungry for information. That means they are powerless against a lot of things. And because they are powerless and don't have a lack of knowledge, the Bible says in the New King James Version, the people are destroyed. It's important for you to understand in other um, translations, it says, "My people perish because of lack of because of a lack of knowledge." So, when you're listening to me, and you want to learn more, it's a sign that you thirst for the great power of God to reveal Himself through your life. 
It is a great testimony for your love to be like dad. The dad above. This morning I am going to give you information. And with that information it's going to make you a little bit more powerful. So listen and absorb carefully. Now when you absorb a lot of information. It makes you intelligent. But if you don't or unable to use that information. That is useless. And the only way you'll be able to use that information is if you have wisdom. In other words, Jesus that is in you, that reveals things through the information that you have. God cannot reveal something to you if you don't have information about the thing. So the first step you have to take to get revelation is to know things. Now, I want you to understand this. That it doesn't mean because you inserted information, in other words you have knowledge, that you can be trusted. You have to have wisdom so that you can interpret it, so that you are not dangerous. Now, Many people have lots of information, but the information has a lack of wisdom and therefore these are very dangerous people. So in order to tackle a certain issue in your life, you must have the right knowledge about that, info that situation. If you don't have the right information about that situation, but you have lots of information that are irrelevant, but you are without the right information, it makes you a very dangerous person to lead your life and it also makes you a very dangerous person to lead others. Now, I'm going to play you a YouTube clip. And I want you to look at the words that are written there. Now, you would have seen there, out of the 6,700 pages of stuff that doctors have inserted, they have knowledge about, 
there's a minuscule amount about the pokes. So if a doctor has to give you advice, yet he doesn't know about the poke, it makes him a very dangerous person to listen to. So therefore, when you want to make a decision, you got to go to somebody that has lots of information about something and has the wisdom to interpret it. Therefore, if you are asking the question, my doctor says it's okay. Ask yourself, does he have information about a certain thing? But there's an aura created about these medical specialists that gives you confidence. Yet, the truth about what they have inside of them is very hidden. That's why if you don't have knowledge yourself, even about this issue, it makes you run around and prone to making wrong decisions. Now, I'm going to read to you Exodus 25, 9. And this is God's instructions concerning Moses making a place for him to come and dwell in the tent of meeting where he was going to come and make his presence felt so he can lead the priests to lead the Jews. Exodus 25, 9. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. You know, when God chooses to inhabit a place, he gave these people specific instructions how to make the moldings, where the furnitures must be. So his temple, even when Solomon was building it, it was specific. It wasn't just haphazard, whatever was in Solomon's mind, he put here and there. No, God when he chooses to inhabit a place, the, the place must be in order of what he wants. And let's read 1 Kings chapter 8. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. Now this is Solomon telling God that God, even the heavens can't contain you. How will this earthly place that I built for you going to contain you? Because he knew God's standard of occupation. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 6 has the answer. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Wow. If God gave such specific instructions for a physical temple that built by hands, can you imagine the standard he dictates if your body is going to host the God of gods, the Lord of lords? It's going to, you're going to have to perfect the temple as best you can. Striving every day to be that mark of perfection. But God is, as long as you blood washed, you pure enough for that temple to remain his abode. But remember, the Holy Spirit is an invited guest in your temple. Your body belongs to you. You make the decisions about what goes through your mind. You make the decision about what lives in your heart. You make the decision about the actions that you take on a daily basis. 
The spirit of God is a guest. He is an invited guest. That chooses to make you his aboding, his abiding place. His temple. And so God doesn't come inside of you and dictate to you. Sometimes you'll hear a soft voice. A nudge. A conscience speaking to you. That when something you're doing wrong or you're making a wrong choice. That Holy Spirit that is so amazing. That knows all things. Is giving you a nudge. And many people's spirit neglect to listen. And then when they land themselves in trouble they say you know I had a feeling I shouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't have done that. But that is how God talks to you. But the final decision about what goes through your mind, what bitterness you host in your heart, it belongs to you. Now, if God is going to be hosted in your temple, you need to make every effort to know all things about his temple. That is your body. And if you don't have information about the place that God wants to live or lives in, you are violating God's order and you reducing the strength of your spirit to even host such an awesome God. That's why when I talking to you about your body, I expect that you don't just see it as that. You see it as a sacred place in which God lives. And I'm going to give you information, knowledge about this body. So that you can be an appropriate host to the spirit of God. I hope you will pay attention. I'm not just going to give you information. Because it will increase your strength anyway. But I'm going to show you and demonstrate to you how wisdom operates using this information. The book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. This is my first example. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Now when the spirit of God lives in you, remember he doesn't control your emotions. He lives there as just a guest. You are the boss. You have to take control. So let us look at what the Spirit of God expects you to be like when He lives in you. He says, you must reflect joy in your heart. You must reflect love in your heart. We'll skip the others just for now for the sake of time. And you must have self-control. Let's look at that word love. Now I know it's a loose word and it's, I know it's impossible to go allow, around loving everybody. But God is talking about something a bit deeper. He's talking about the absence of hatred. And when you believe you have the spirit of God living in you, but inside of you, when you really search deep, you find that there is a hatred for certain people. That demonstrates to you that God who is living in you, you're going to make him uncomfortable. The same with joy. So if you are a believer who believes God is living in you and you go the opposite route of joy, you become depressed about circumstances, about the loss of a loved one, about the loss of money or job or whatever. I know the standard is high that God sets us. But if you sink into depression, you are producing fruit of depression which is directly opposite to joy. You are allowing thoughts into your mind because you are the boss of those thoughts that are hurting the Spirit of God who chooses to live in you. Now what will you do? If you go invited into someone's house. 
But if you are a true believer and you'll hear them in that house speaking languages, they're using vulgar terms, they're doing things in that house like it just causes nausea inside of you. And I'm sure you've been to places like that. You just want to leave out of that premises. You, you don't ever want to return to that because the owner of that house is entertaining all the bad language, all the bad behavior. And the Spirit of God feels the exact same way. So if you think that if you are depressed or you don't put an effort to, to not hate people, even self-control, where you, where you indulge yourself knowing that the indulgence is wrong. And, and you just say, I can't help it. You want drugs or you want alcohol or you are promiscuous. You say, I just can't help myself. You have lack of self-control. Now when somebody has a lack of self-control, it means that God that's living inside of you has to live there and entertain all the madness that you do. Which in, because his standard is oh so high for temples, he will not continue living there. And when he removes himself, another spirit who is akin to those feelings of hatred, those feelings belong to the kingdom of darkness. So the Lord of that kingdom is going to come into your body. One of his demons or dead spirits are going to come there. And they will start whispering to you like what the spirit of God used to do. They will give you advice from the inside silently. Sometimes you'll, you, you'll make decisions when you end up, you find that you are made such a poor decision. I married the wrong person for the wrong reasons. I just had a feeling I should do it, but look at where I am now. Because that feeling that you had, you thought it was intuition from God, but it actually was a spirit inside of you making those choices. So when you remove God because of all the actions that you have, you find that, you see, this is wisdom interpreting itself when you have the knowledge of these things. It's telling you that if God lives in a temple and the temple owner violates the temple, that the, 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 the result will be, wisdom tells you, the result that will happen is that God will remove himself. I hope you're understanding that. Now every day, the devil will use people around you, circumstances around you. Remember this world is his. And he will use those people to disturb your spirit so much so that you hurt the spirit of God by what you think and how you feel. And, and I know it's happening all the time. He wants you to entertain unforgiveness. He wants you to entertain hatred. And he, once he engages you, you, you make the spirit of God inside of you uncomfortable. I can only tell you what I will do if I'm in an uncomfortable place. And I'm sure God's standards are much higher. Now listen, many Christians who are possessed because they are depressed, they got fruit that is opposite to the fruit of the Spirit of God. But they don't accept, oh, you know, I love God, how can I be possessed? Pastor, I'm not possessed. But every feeling of depression creates an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit that He does not want to be in. I hope you're getting this. And therefore, I am endeavoring to strengthen your spirit during the course of this year. But this is how wisdom works. Wisdom takes the information about who God is and his temple and he interprets it so that you can understand how to live your life out. Now I've shared much of this information with you, what I'm about to share before. But I, I'm, I'm using this so that I can demonstrate to you the knowledge that you can acquire by understanding and how you can use that knowledge to know what's happening during the end times. Now, in this world that we live in, 
there is the the the, the people of the devil especially are concerned they concern because of what they call in climate change and climate change is caused because of an excess amount of carbon dioxide co2 and carbon dioxide increases when more human beings occupy the planet not only because they breathe out carbon dioxide but in order for you and every individual that's on the planet to use a toothpaste the manufacturer has to make toothpaste which causes gases to be released into the air and that increases carbon dioxide so everything you eat that is made everything you wear that is made is causing more carbon dioxide so besides breathing the fact that you existing what they call you leave a carbon footprint behind because all the activities that you involved in on a daily basis increases the level of co2 now there's a more intricate meaning of this but i won't get into that now but safe to say that the freemasons the elites the satanists that you and i already know have an agenda the reason they doing uh, an attack is because they want to get rid of the number of people on the planet and we heard uh, our gates friend talk about this on the video i played for you earlier so we know the agenda they've been trying to start this through the eugenics movement of the 70s and even before that i spoke to you even about the south african doctor death man who now works at medi clinic or through medi clinic that is still on staff yet he was accused of and 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 found guilty of trying or, or planning and plotting to kill the african people now we can see evidence of this but the same cabal that owns all the mainstream media they will not give you this information because they don't want you to see what is happening and let me go to a news korea express dot com on oprah and this is what the article says the head of indianapolis based insurance company one america said that death rate is up a stunning 40% from pre levels among working age people another article by Paul Craig Roberts quotes the words of the CEO of this One America he says this is huge huge they've never seen anything like this before in their history normally death rates don't change at all they are very stable it would take something really big to have an effect this big the effect size is 12 sigma that is an event that happens every 2.8 eon 32 years as shown in the image below that's very rare it's basically never the universe is only 14 billion years old which is 1.4 e13 in other words the event that happened is not a statistical fluke something very big caused it we are seeing right now the highest death rates we have seen in the history of this business not just at one america the company ceo scott davison said during an online news conference this week the data is consistent across every player in that business davison was one of several business leaders who spoke during the virtual news conference on december 30th that was organized by the indiana chamber of commerce now now we know this is happening but you will never see it on the cabal owned mainstream media there's many more articles and news things that are coming out on social media but you won't find it broadcast on the mainstream media and even the fact checkers come out sometime the paid cabal fact checkers 
come out and discredit things, including this one. Now, I can't play you this video clip because they'll obviously confiscate it, but uh, I'll ask Adrian and Nicole to try and include it in the rumble video so you can see the full, it's only 20, a few seconds, in fact, where I'll read you what the article says. On the 22nd of December, that's last year, W Director Tedros made this statement. So if, and listen to his words, people. So if it's going to be used, it's better to focus on those groups who have risk of severe disease rather than as we see some countries are using to give those pokes to K-I-L-L -L children. Now, you'll be amazed. Out of the abundance of the man's heart, he spoke these words. In other words, he's saying, when people are getting poked, they're using that, that additional one now, that third one. They're giving it to uh, young children, but they're supposed to give it to older folk who are vulnerable, but they're using it on young children. He's saying that, and he's not just using the word using, he's saying they will K-I-L-L -L, the kids. This is amazing. The fact checkers came out and they said, no, no, he, he didn't mean that. He was, he was just using the word, uh, I can't even justify their magnets. But the video clip, the Twitter feed has the whole thing. Perhaps you can get it on Rumble. But those were his actual words. So we know that getting rid of people to reduce the CO2 emissions is something on the agenda. They want to prolong life on the planet because they know when that CO2 comes to an end, then life on this planet will be at its end. And they want to keep it going because the devil himself has given them authority to rule here. They don't want to lose that power. Now, I'm going to try once again to give you information and then use that information to join the dots, which we will use wisdom to do. There is a website MCEUS that tells us, you see we have soldiers in our body and we know them loosely. Now this is complicated but I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to simplify it for you. We have soldiers in our body called white blood cells. We all know that, right? And all our blood cells, the red, the white ones, they last in our bodies for only up to three weeks or so before they die. And then new ones are made. So every three weeks, whatever our body made, it's now dead. And after three weeks, the new blood cells are made. And that's three weeks. That's about 13 to 20 days, plus or minus. This is now information that I injected into your body, into your mind. Now let's see wisdom play its role. When, you, when they ask you, to take a poke after the first one, how much time they want, it, they want to elapse before you take the second one. Let's look at that. According to the CDC, you should get your second one as close to the recommended three week or four week interval as possible. You should not get the second dose early. Wow. You see, when you get the first one, it hijacks your immune system and kills off the WBC, the white blood cells, in your body. And then, as soon as the new ones are made, three weeks later, you must take the second one to get rid of that lot. You will have a very small amount living after that. So, what they say is, your ability to fight anything that enters your body is diminished because you lost. That's why people are getting all sorts of sickness. Now, I took the one information about how long your soldiers are lasting in your body and I put it together with what 
the CDC is saying how long you must take the second shot. When you, when you bring those two pieces of information, knowledge into your head, and you use wisdom to decipher it, you can see a clear pattern. And the evidence is, even the insurer, who is, they cost, they're losing millions now, if not billions, because they have to pay out life insurances. In fact, the same article says that the adverse ev events are causing people to get disabled. So they're claiming disability from the insurance. So he's saying it's going to be catastrophic for that industry. So what I'm saying to you is when you piece all the information together, even if you doubted the information given to you about how dangerous this thing is, when you, if you use wisdom and you piece it together, it's not hard for you to see. But this is part and parcel of explaining to you the mechanism of the temple in which God lives. Now, it's not like they didn't hide it. Because if you look at further clues, and I had information about that, and I gave you information about that. Long time ago when we spoke about that company, you find that they have on their website, which I've shown you, that in order for this new technology, the M1, to work, they have to, your immune system has to be compromised. In other words, have to drop. They told us this. This is how that new technology works. And so when you put all that information that you had and you join the dots, it allows you to paint a picture. Now if, if somebody got all that information and they can't join the dots, means they lack, they lack wisdom. Now, I already shared with you things that these professors didn't come out with up till recently, but I told you this like a year ago even more. Now, there is a well-known professor, Fanden Bosch. Let us look at his credentials. He used to work as a senior project leader for GSK Biologicals. He was also head of technologies. He worked for the Gates Foundation as a senior programmer and official for global health and pokes Gavi program manager. In other words, he was at the center of the poking thing. And he came out and in voice for science and he said this, poke people are carrying the disease and leaking it to the unpoked. And the new uh, things that are coming out are coming from the poked people. Now, I'll read to you part, and part of his article. Mass infection prevention and mass poking with leaky pokes in the midst of a, this, what we're having now, can only breed highly infectious derivatives. He says something startling, and I'll put it in simple terms so that you can understand. You know this new technology, it hijacks your DNA. It puts in that DNA a code that will only specifically recognize um, this particular thing that we are suffering from that came out, this, this uh, CO thing that came out, uh, this disease that we're facing now. So they, you know how they do this. They take a sample, and it works with all sorts of pokes. They take a sample, uh, and they put it in the poke, and they poke it into you. This technology hijacks your, your DNA as well. But it also gives instructions, and they told you this, that it's supposed to give your instructions to the white blood cells so that they can attack this uh, disease when it comes in. But this is in simple terms how it works. Um, let's say on, on, on my team, there's two teams. On my team I got five people. And I have to defend Anything that comes past us that can harm, uh, harm the, what I'm protecting. And on the other team, they got 10 players. And 
this five of us cannot allow the ten players, one of them even, to run with the ball past us. And what this poke does, it trains us, five of us, to recognize only one player from the, from the ten that are there. So if another player carries the ball, we'll stand and look. Only if that one particular disease carries itself into us, then we'll attack it. But if it's a different one, if it's what they keep changing into, if it's, a, if it's another variant, then you'll find that, that we cannot identify it. We are white blood cells. We cannot identify it. And therefore, if a new variant comes, you can, one of the other players will carry it, will go past us and score a goal. This is the simplest way I can make you understand. And, and, and he explained it, uh, Van, Van den Bosch, in a similar way. Now I want you to listen to this Fauci man, Cabal mascot. In Oprah News um, app, he, the headline says, he discourages the fully poke going to restaurants. So even though you fully poke, he discourages you from going to the restaurant. Listen to the logic behind his statement. Pay careful attention. The, on, on CNN, the, the Dana Bash lady asked him, how should poked and people with the extra one behave? Can they go into a restaurant, eat safely indoors right now? And Fauci said, you know, when you're having such a, I call it a tsunami of infections, Dana, we are seeing people who are poked and got the extra one, who are getting new outbreaks. So when you are in a situation where you have so many infections going out, the thing that you want to say is that if you want to do this like that, better to do them in a setting where you know the people around you are poked and got the extra one. So we know <laughs> that the goal is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So, he, you know, I, I don't know if I have to make it any simpler for you. So he's saying, listen, the people that are getting poked are carrying a, a disease. But he says this, if you want to be safe and gather with people, go when the people are poked in your family, then you know them. But yet, the same people might be carrying an infection. So, I mean, the logic makes no sense and yet there are people who have this information but cannot interpret it and there's some that don't even want to recognize information knowledge and wisdom can save your life you need to preserve this temple for as long as god wants to use it and only knowledge will give you the power to do so so i want you to pay Attention to the following video and understand what it says. I'm going to give you knowledge that you need and help you to understand it in a simple way. I don't want to give you a long lesson, but something that just so that you understand how it applies. Because many people lost their lives because they don't have this knowledge. You see the oxygen that you breathe in. It doesn't come like all the other elements. When you write 
oxygen, you must have a 2 in the bottom. When you write any other element in the periodic table, it's just H or, or C for carbon, uh, Na for sodium like that. But when you write oxygen, it's always O2. And the reason for that is because it has a covalent bond. It cannot exist on its own. It has an attraction to another oxygen molecule known and we know it as O2. Now, I'm just going to teach you a little bit if you don't mind because unless you understand this, you might not get what I'm saying and the importance of it. Every element on that periodic table is made of atoms and each atom in the center has what we call positive energy or protons. But on the outside ring, they are what, call, what we call electrons. And generally, you have the same number of protons as the number of electrons. But each electron occupies an orbital level, a circle, around the nucleus. And normally oxygen has eight. That's why they have a number eight. That's his atomic number eight, the number of protons. But you normally have eight electrons that are circling. But you have on the outer layer, you have what we, what we, what we know as in science called valence electrons. The electrons that are the negatively charged particles on the outside shell of the atom is called valence electrons. Now, when you have an even number, a pair, two, four, six, even number, that is around the outside of the shell of the atom, then it is stable. But when it's an odd number, when the electron is not paired up, it's single, that makes it unstable it makes it even dangerous it makes it highly reactive but we know oxygen is stable and because it has an even number of electrons if we look at some examples you got hydrogen which got one electron on the outer shell it makes it highly reactive because it's an even it's an odd number you got the carbon atom, it's got an even number. It's carbon six. So you've got six electrons going around and it's quite stable. You have nitrogen, which has five electrons. It means it's unstable. Now, in order for an electron or an atom to be stable, every electron must have a pair. When it doesn't have its partner, it gets hungry. It's hunting down electrons from other things it wants to suck it one of the things I preached about is about energy vampires an unpaired element with unpaired electrons gets hungry it's an electron thief it wants to steal because electrons is energy so if you have any element in you that has an unpaired outer layer of electrons you it's a it's an electron choice in some words it's an energy rogue and it wants to steal energy, electrons, from somewhere else to make sure that it's a pair again. So it becomes lethal, it becomes dangerous. Now I'll explain to you why. When, now oxygen, when you break it down, when you breathe it into your nostrils and it goes into your lungs and you break it down, something unique happens. It breaks that covalent bond between them and it leaves an unpaired electron in oxygen which makes oxygen very dangerous. Oxygen is the main cause of free radicals roaming around in your body. This single electron that's sitting on the outer layer of oxygen after you break it down when you breathe it in, it becomes it has sucking power. It is called, that, that loose one running around called a free radical. Free radicals 
are looking to hunt down energy from other particles, from organs, from cells, and so it will suck wherever it goes. So the more O you have in your body, the more oxygen you breathe in, the more free radicals, and means that it's sucking energy out of something. For example, and I gave this example before, if you have an apple and you cut it and you leave it on the desk, you, after a short while you'll see it's brown because oxygen is going around it. Oxygen that in the air is getting broken down and it's stealing electrons and it's killing the apple. Slowly, after a long time, it gets rotten very quickly. And, and the, the problem is, you see, it works even, even with your heels when it cracks in winter or your lips. You see, in winter, there is no moisture in the atmosphere. It's just oxygen. Keep touching your heels as you walk around, especially with sandals. People who wear a lot of sandals, they go around just with the bare feet sandals and the dry air has oxygen which hits your, your, your heel and that's why it cracks, it's dying because of the exposure to oxygen directly. Now, if you want to solve that problem, although Ingram's camphor might have the solution, the, the solution is you have to wear socks, you have to keep your feet moisturized for as long as possible so that the crack can heal. You're not exposing it to oxygen, there's moisture that's helping. So, you know, these are simple things and the simple reason is because of free radicals in the air. When they hit your skin, this is what happens. When you, when you have, when you, every time you breathe in and breaks down in your body, you are actually dying slowly. Your body regenerates cells, but as soon as the cell just is born, it kills it. The instruction that makes, that is given to make a new one is compromised. This is the reason of free radicals can cause cancer, tumors, because it's the, the inappropriate instructions to grow new cells. And it's caused by free radicals and that is caused by oxygen. So oxygen is responsible for slow death and that's why you age. That's why, and you see the people who do, who go through a lot of stress and who do a lot of exercise, a lot of running, the more they breathe in, the older looking they get, quicker. And this is a scientific fact. And stress and extra activities and more vibrancy and you know when you keep doing physical things you find that you take in more oxygen. And now, you know, just, just so that you know these things, the way to get rid of free radicals in your body is to what they call detox or radox. You have to give your, the oxygen that's running around loose inside of you with that free radical, you have to give it something to steal energy from so that it doesn't take it from your cells. And, and the thing that donates electrons to that oxygen and, and keep it neutral um, is fruit and vegetables. When you eat them, they don't mind giving energy away. And one of the reasons why you can donate it is because of vitamin C, your body doesn't make that. Vitamin E, your body doesn't make that. So fruit and vegetables give you that. It's, uh, it's like a detox for your body because it's getting rid of the free radical toxins that are roaming around. But if you leave it for too long, it's what they call oxidative stress. It causes kidney failure, lung failure, all sorts of things. So as bad as oxygen is, it's also good so that you can live. Genesis 2.17, I taught you this, but I'll share this again. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. <laughs> it was from that day onwards, from the tree of good and evil, the same fruit, oxygen, man 
was breathed his first breath on that day where oxygen was taken into his lungs he was not supposed to die he was supposed to live but that act not only killed his soul but it caused his body to have a limited lifespan so slowly as people breathe in they started to die slowly so every breath you take actually kills you now the book of wisdom this is solomon's book chapter 1 12 to 14 god did not create death do not bring on your own death by sinful actions god did not invent death and when living creatures die he gives it gives him no pleasure he created everything so it might continue to exist and everything he created is wholesome and good there is no deadly poison in them no death does not rule this world now let me see if i can help you put two and two together when you have pneumonia or you have a disease inside of your lungs the one that's out now and people from a long time ago last year as soon as it came out the first thing they were doing is giving them because now the lung got infection they're giving them what to put into their lungs oxygen and when you breathe in oxygen you are actually feeding the infection you're feeding the bacteria you're feeding the 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 virus you're feeding it inside of you now that is one of the reasons why every person that i know that got admitted to a hospital that had to go on an oxygen ventilator did not come out of there that's because the oxygen that they breathing in creates free radicals that increase the growth of that disease inside and after a short period of time of pure oxygen now we breathe in about 20% oxygen with other things in the air when we breathing just 20% when you take pure that's like four or five times more that's what's in the air the death rate the amount of free radicals that you're taking in is four or five times more than your normal breathing outside so you know i was amazed i was so blessed in a way that after i already knew something like this i heard a uh, a doctor dr sankara chetty he testified before the german investigative committee on december 10th and there is a a bit shoot video that i'm hoping we can put on rumble so you can hear his brief explanation in the beginning that he doesn't even have oxygen necessary for treating his patients he says that he's treated and cured over 7000 patients by seeing them in personally this does not include the consults he did by video he says he gives you ways in which you can treat this but he says oxygen is not one of them so as you can see when you take one piece of information knowledge and you add wisdom to it you come to a point where you realize there has to be all these knowledgeable doctors so called knowledgeable know nothing about how they treating patients but they have the audacity to say we know what we doing and yet death results and so if you have this understanding this knowledge do you know it could and probably will save your life if you apply the principles of understanding this concept this information gives your spirit strength it gives it power and the more you know the more you can preserve this temple keep it pure so that the spirit of god doesn't leave you so that you can have a guarantee that the holy spirit is going to live in you for as long as he wants to until he calls you home but if you didn't have this knowledge if you don't have this information you will perish you will be destroyed and that is the goal of the devil's children i want to make sure that the more you know 
the more power you have to make the correct choices. Revelations 18.23, we read this last week. And the light of the lamp will shine in you no more, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride will be heard in you no more. That means we will be raptured. And then for your merchants, that's all these devil's children, Satan's advocates on the planet, where the great ones of the earth, the people in the power, in power positions, people in authority, and all the nations were deceived by your sorcery. God is addressing Beelzebub, Azazel, the devil. And he's saying by your sorcery, by your, I read this to you and I gave you the meaning of sorcery in, in Greek. It is pharmakia. Pharmakia is medicine, witchcraft. By your witchcraft, you have deceived people. And the people who are your merchants that are selling this lie, they are using that method, like what I told you in the four horsemen. Medicine is the way they're going to deceive people. And they're going to destroy people. But as for his children, God is saying, they won't be here anymore. Which tells me that his coming is even more imminent than you might think. If you have knowledge, beloved, there is absolutely no way that the devil will be able to deceive you. And if you have Jesus in you, wisdom in you, he will help you to see things that ordinary people won't be able to see. Follow me. Get hungry so that God can feed you. And the more you are fed, the more powerful you become. Join me in prayer today. Let me pray over you on the first week of the new year. Beloved people, I am aware of the stress that these demons are putting on us, on all of you. If you have a situation where you are under stress, that your employer is coercing you, or with a threat that you will lose your position, I want you to raise your hand right now. If you are concerned about anything else, Concerning this measure, I want you to raise your hand. And we're going to pray and petition our Father together that He will find a way of making sure that we are safe in His arms. After all, He knows all things. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person who is, has their hands raised with me right now. I ask on behalf of them that you have a divine intervention in their life right now as we speak let circumstances change father many of your children need your hand over them right now they need your intervention we need your angels to go before us and to make the paths smooth for us. Despite what the enemy is launching against us. I pray that your peace rest in every heart. And then Lord, even what our minds cannot work out. Even if it's the 11th hour. You will make it happen in our favor. I trust. I believe in your power. Grant us favor, all of us. For this coming year. And let your blood be sprinkled. On every hand that is raised. And asking for your blessing. Your protection. And your covering. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Wonderful to be with you this morning. I thank you for, your, for even sharing this video. And remember. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free. There is no charge. And every week, you will get a fresh sermon at 8 a.m. generally on a Sunday morning. Automatically, if you press the notifications bell that's on, on, the, on the channel. I also would like for you to follow us any which way you can and spread this message to as many people as you can. We don't know who God is going to touch and whose finger is going to make that happen. God bless you. Have a beautiful, blessed week. From my family to yours, enjoy 2022.